the California quail. Unless you're expecting it, you're likely to be surprised by its appearance. This extravagant looking upland bird is difficult to hunt and looks like it comes from some faraway land. But its native range? Well, it's found right here in the western United States weighing in at just seven ounces and flying at reported speeds of over 55 miles per hour, this bird is tough to connect with for any shotgun. Another one, that one. Always reload. Oh. <laughs> We didn't hit anything, did we? No. We have come to Eastern Washington in search of this elusive bird with a heavy focus on sagebrush covered foothills and open woodlands. My confidence level on success is somewhere around a six out of 10. Could not believe how fast it was. They are insanely fast. So we've extended our trip to include my favorite pastime. There you go. Puddle duck hunting over decoys with a few great canine companions. Let's just see if we can add some quail meat to our duck pile. Did I get that or did you get that? Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors. The first morning of our trip was cold and icy when we met up with our buddies Rich, Ken, and their pack of dogs. Show me here where we're going to be pushing. So we're going to be coming up to this cover here. Okay. And we'll split off one group this way, one group this way. We'll go to the end and then we'll kind of make a game plan of where we're going to go from there. After I've already, see I have to be careful because limits and minutes, you know? Yeah, just don't, don't. <laughs> and we never saw one bird. <laughs> so it's kind of like we're, we're hunting a big fence row. Correct. Pushing along it. This yep. is this is public land. It's all public land. It looks like private land. The way it's it's managed uh, in a way that they have brought in water, like mm -hmm. sprinklers, okay. so that so that it creates a uh, get cover for the birds and oh. protection. Okay. Well, I'll set up, separate from him. However, else we're gonna do it, we'll do it. Perfect. All okay. right. We would break up into two hunting groups, one on each side walking the narrow stretch of cover, with the dogs attempting to flush the birds in the cover. This dog is having the time of its life. Should they succeed, the quail should bust out of the cover, giving one of the hunting parties a passing shot. Oh, what was that? Oh, that one. Granted, with these birds and a new puppy enjoying his very first hunt, Things don't always work out the way you hoped. So far, we just pushed three down away in front of us. So we moved down. Now we're trying to stay in front of them more because it seems like the quail go up and out now as opposed to just straight out. So you saw Cooper on point and it, the brush is so thick that the quail had a chance to get to the end and escape. That's where it's tough. You almost have to kind of surround them like we're trying to do. When the puppy barks, is it just a bark? That dog is uh, probably has scent, is excited. Yeah. And this is her first hunt, so this is all kind of new. Yeah. Biologists believe that one of the main reasons the California quail numbers are on the rise is because they can successfully live near human development. And some of the best pieces of hunting property are like this one, not too far from town. I can't wait to take out that transformer. <laughs> Half of Washington lost power. Do you guys know why? <laughs> no idea. It was a first quail for me, and it was a first quail for this puppy, and I couldn't believe the instincts that it had to know to go after a downed bird. If you're new to the sport of quail hunting and you do a little Google searching, you may find a few articles that mention targeting cover near rivers. I implemented that idea here because I have had quite a bit of success back home in Michigan hunting grouse near water. This is the Columbia River, which is actually the largest river in all of Northwest 
the United States. It flows down to British Columbia and then comes, shoots west as it gets to the bottom of Washington State. And then it literally forms most, most of the border between Oregon and Washington. But it's bigger in person. When you think river, you think something you could walk across, but you ain't gonna do that. Old Man Peabody on all this once. Back to the Future, probably the most underrated series. The thing about Back to the Future that always worried me was once you got to the future one, because the number two, they go to 2015. So once you got there, it kind of like spoils any like excited about the future. Now that I'm here in 2020, I long for 2015 and it no longer bothers me. I like it a lot still, but they're still the best movies of all time. If you had to rank them, how would you rank them? I would say probably... It's not hard. Two, three, one. That's insane. Yeah. That is literally insane. Not one person ever ranks two. First. I like two. Wild West is great. And then one's, nothing wrong with one. It's classic, but you know, it's what started it that allowed them to build two and three. It goes three, one, two. No. Yeah. Not. Wild West was the best episode. Do you have them downloaded on your phone right now? No. Because I- Wrap it up, Jeff. <laughs> We continued on for a few more hours, taking in the scenery and just genuinely enjoying the hunt until Ken and Jeff had this startling and rare shot opportunity. Oh, nice. As you just saw, when it comes to quail hunting, you always have to be on high alert because you'll probably only have a split second to make a shot. That beautiful quail would wrap up our hunt in this area. I was absolutely pumped to jump back in the truck and rush over to the next spot. But Jeff, well the guy just lives in his own world. All ready to go. That was good. I hope we see quail at the next spot. This is gonna be awesome. Where is Jeff? Come on. Get in the truck! So angry. Take it from us, as lifelong best friends, we totally accept each other for our quarks. We always get along, and we never bother debating the small stuff. Now that's the formula for a perfect friendship. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. We went on to hunt quail later that afternoon and even woke up early the following day for another cold and icy morning hunt. We had very little luck. We basically had three to four hours of not seeing anything and then just a few random seconds of action sprinkled in the day, which kind of reminded me of a horse being led around by a carrot on a string. It's just out of reach, but there's just enough of a chance to keep you going, but at the end of the day, it ain't going to happen. So we hit the road and headed back to the west coast because the next morning, we'd be duck hunting. Maybe I like wearing it. Rich, do you think of that? Yeah, it's all the reflection. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, but it's detrimental to the heart, so it's stop. For this duck hunt, we got the kind of weather that only a duck hunter would want. Absolutely terrible. Jeff and Rich set up in a blind about five football fields away with Rich's dog, Zeno, while Ken and I took the puppy, and at first light, the birds were really moving. For those of you wondering why on earth I'm not shooting, these birds are farther than they appear. And waiting for a duck to come within the magical 40 yard mark can sometimes feel like an eternity. There you go. 
No, no, wrong bird. Yeah, that one will taste better. And just like that, the puppy named Bunny tracked down two quail yesterday, and today he was looking for his very first duck. His breed, German wired-haired pointers, are known to upland and waterfowl hunt. And while he may be attempting to point my dead duck, I'd say he's got great instincts for his first duck hunt ever. Meanwhile, Jeff and Rich were also busy knocking down some birds. Take him right now. Nice. Hey, Sweet. That's hey, a hey, green head too. Hey. You ready, Bubba? Fetch. Okay. She washed it. Will your left good shot. Thank you. Good call, by the way. So you saw how it came in in the wind direction? And yeah. It sat right in the pocket we left. So that looks perfect. Hey, hey, hey. Good job. Good job. Good job. California quail, aka the valley quail, enjoy the coastal sagebrush foothills and high desert areas you find in the northwest United States. Mainly a seed eater, but they are also known to pig out on some leaves, catkins, poison oak berries, and even invertebrates, although 70% of their diet is vegetarian. The average life expectancy of a wild quail is less than a year, and nearly 70 to 80% of the nation's quail population dies every single year, mainly because they're a tasty prey animal for a variety of species the second they are dropped into the nest as an egg. Now before you get too worried, you should know that most females lay eggs twice a year and each clutch has seven to 28 eggs in it, depending on the species. So the high mortality rate is offset by the large broods. While not the case with all species, the California quail populations are slowly ticking upwards and the future is looking bright for this species. Even so, Purchasing a hunting license and joining conservation organizations like Quail Forever help fund conservation initiatives that will make sure we have proper habitat and healthy quail populations for future generations. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks, built to serve Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And when in Washington State, our Ram always comes from Tacoma Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. For the remainder of the day, we had every kind of weather you could imagine. The warm, sunny openings gave the dogs a chance to nap, although Rich did pick off this mallard from a nice group. Take him. And when the storms rolled back in, Jeff managed to get another mallard himself. Although he wasn't too sure about it. Did I get that or did you get that? All in all, I'd say it was a very successful ending to the day. On today's episode, we shot some ducks and we were blessed with a few quail. No matter how modern the world gets, we still need food. And I have such a connection to mine because I harvest it myself. Quail meat especially makes me feel connected and aware of my place on this earth because it was the very game that God provided his people when they were hungry in the book of Exodus. It honestly makes the bird feel even more special like it was created and sent especially for me and my loved ones. This hunt was a great refresher that everything good comes from God.
All right, I'm gonna be honest. The quail didn't make it home. I ate those already, but the duck is what we're gonna cook up. I get so excited because eating mallard meat is literally my favorite thing on the planet. Now these mallards here, I dry aged them, meaning I hung them in a cooler for about six days, completely whole. Didn't take the feathers off, didn't take the guts out, nothing. Just in a 32 to 34 degree cooler, left them hanging, pulled out the meat. I actually went skinless and fatless with these breasts. Not something I always do. I actually prefer the fat and the skin on them. But with these, I decided to take them off for this recipe because I know a lot of you probably have duck breasts without skin and without fat in the freezer ready to go. And now you can do this. All right, you're gonna add just enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan, cover out the bottom. Then we're gonna add our shallots and garlic. Okay, now we're gonna be cooking these guys for five or six minutes. We wanna get them nice and translucent. Just gonna keep moving around. Let them get nice and hot. Now the mushrooms actually hold a lot of moisture. So when you put these in, you're gonna kinda cook these till all the moisture is released and they're cooked down pretty good. And this is gonna flavor the mushrooms really nicely. See the moisture coming out of those mushrooms, getting all shiny. Now, I'm gonna add a third cup of vermouth, which, depending on who pours it for you, is roughly that much. Stir that around. I'm gonna let this cook down for two to three minutes, that way the kids don't get a buzz. One and a half cups of broth. Now it's gonna cool everything down fast. So you're gonna leave it at medium high heat and kinda let it build back up its heat. And then once it starts to simmer, you're gonna buckle it back down to low and you're gonna leave that for about 30 minutes. This is cooking down nicely. It'll really thicken when it's ready to go. In the meantime, come over here, drop some olive oil in a pan. And we're just gonna sear these breasts. It's important that you want duck to be medium, medium rare. Most people just say rare, people that know what they're talking about when it comes to duck. I'm just gonna salt and pepper, crazy. The breast, because I dry age it, it's like really tacky. And you can feel that tackiness. And that's because the muscle's already been broken down nicely. All right, oil's getting nice and hot. We'll drop these puppies in. Oh yeah, that's the sizzle. All right, while those guys are sizzling and popping, come over here. Just about all the moisture is gone out of this and you don't want it to be, you still want it to be moist. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off of this guy. Just let these finish simmering. And by the time the duck breasts are done, these will pair well together. Okay, duck breasts are almost done. These guys quit simmering. So we're gonna add in our heavy whipping cream. We're gonna add a quarter cup of whipping cream. Mm. Then we'll add our cheese. Keep that moving. And that will thicken everything up really nicely. All right, now that that's thickened up nicely, add the herbs as well. Those cook down. Now, the nice thing about this too is you're finishing the sauce, you're giving the meat a chance to rest, which is imperative for the juices to stay in. When people say, what does that even mean? Like the resting, essentially, it's just letting the meat settle back down from all the heat going through it, and it allows it to absorb up all the juices back inside it, making it better. If you cut it too soon, everything kind of runs out. I've never been much of like a presentation guy as far as making it look pretty, especially when I'm eating it myself. So this might not necessarily do that, although that beautiful red center of this meat would make you think it's Christmas time. Regardless of what it looks like, that is going to be tasty. Grab a fork. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I mean, that is fantastic. I'll tell you what, it is different when you dry age it. So hang your ducks, and it'll make this recipe and just about any other one worthwhile. Again, I recommend keeping the fat and skin on, but if you've already got some in the refrigerator or in the freezer, this is the recipe for you. Check out all of our other recipes at thegreenwayoutdoors.com. Stay green.
On today's episode, we did a variety of bird hunts in Washington State. Now here's the Greenway gear checklist you'll need for your quail hunt. First thing on the list is your gun. Now today we're going to be using 12 gauge semi-auto shotguns. However, some would consider that to be overkill. Many prefer 20 gauges, especially over and unders because they're light, quick, and easy to maneuver in thick cover. But the choice is yours, because basically any shotgun is equipped and able to handle a quail hunt. Now obviously a quail is a small upland bird, so you'll be using small upland ammo. Today we'll be using 8 shot. Next on the list might be the most important, good broken in boots. With all the hiking and all the climbing you'll be doing, having good boots that are already broken in before the trip are key. They'll prevent blisters and make the entire experience a lot more enjoyable. The terrain we'll be navigating is pretty rough, therefore you're going to need rugged pants. You're always going to be going through brush and rubbing up against stuff. Having pants that have ripstop material is super beneficial so you're not always getting caught on everything and tearing up your pants. And finally, blaze orange. Regardless of where you're hunting, there is probably a law in place requiring some sort of blaze orange while upland hunting. It's for your safety. That way everyone can see you from 360 degrees and they don't make a tragic accident. Look up your DNR guides and find out how many square inches are required. Now that you know what gear you need for this hunt, I hope this episode inspires you and your friends to get out and harvest some birds this fall.